Hi, I'm Kathy. In this lesson, we're going to look at some of the theory of polynomial functions. Our specific objectives are the intermediate value theorem, division of polynomials and synthetic division, the remainder and factor theorems. Let's start with the intermediate value theorem. This theorem says, if p of x defines a polynomial function, and if p of a does not equal p of e, p of b, excuse me, then for a less than or equal to x less than or equal to b, or you could think of this as x between a and b, p of x takes every value between p of a and p of b at least once. A picture will help illustrate this. What we see here is some function p of x. There's an x-coordinate a at this point, and so this function value is p of a. There's an x-coordinate b here, so this function value is p of b. Since p of a is greater than 0, a positive number, and p of b is less than 0, a negative number, then it has to be the case that there is a number c between a and b such that p of c is exactly 0. Let's put some numbers into a statement like that and look at an example. What we want to do is show that the polynomial function defined by p of x equal x cubed minus 2x squared minus x plus 1 has a real 0 between 2 and 3. Well, we're going to use the intermediate value theorem. And so what we're going to do is find p of 2 and p of 3. For this polynomial function, p of 2 is found by finding 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 squared minus 2 plus 1. That's 8 minus 8 minus 2 plus 1, which is negative 1. p of 3 for this polynomial is 3 cubed minus 2 times 3 squared minus 3 plus 1 which is 27 minus 18 minus 3 plus 1, or 7. Now, according to the intermediate value theorem, p of 2 is negative 1, p of 3 is 7. That's negative, that's positive. So somewhere between, actually, I should point over here, between 2 and 3, there is a real 0. And again, that's because p of 2 is a negative number, p of 3 is a positive number. The polynomial function must cross the x-axis or have a real 0 between 2 and 3. Well, let's continue with our discussion of polynomial functions and look at something called synthetic division. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to use synthetic division to find the quotient when p of x equal x to the fourth minus 3x cubed minus 4x squared plus 12x is divided by x minus 2. Now, synthetic division will only apply if the divisor is of the form x minus k. This divisor is of the form with k equal to 2. We set up the division problem using 2 as our divisor and writing what looks like a long division symbol. In the long division symbol, I'm going to use the coefficients from the polynomial, one for each power of x starting with the highest, and including a coefficient for any constant. So I'll list coefficients 1, negative 3, negative 4, 12, and I need the coefficient of the constant, which is 0. What you do when you do the synthetic division is leave a row and draw a line and bring the very first coefficient down below your line. Then multiply that coefficient by the divisor. In this case, we get 2. Write that in the next column under the next coefficient. Add negative 3 and 2 to get negative 1. Then multiply by the divisor. Write it in the next column. And then add to get negative 6. Then multiply to get negative 12. Write it in the next column. Add to get 0. Multiply to get 0, and add to get 0. This number at the right in the last row is always the remainder. In this particular division problem, 
the remainder is zero. We write down the quotient using these numbers in this final row as coefficients of powers of x starting with one power at less than the dividend. So we use one power less than x to the fourth, or x cubed. And we'll write that the quotient is 1x cubed minus 1x squared minus 6x plus the constant 0 plus the remainder over the divisor. And I know it's not necessary to write plus 0 plus 0, but I want to indicate the procedure for writing the quotient when performing synthetic division. Now we use synthetic division within the following two theorems. Let's take a look at them. The first of the two is called the remainder theorem. And it says, if a polynomial p of x is divided by x minus k, the remainder is equal to p of k. This is the polynomial evaluated at k. The factor theorem says, the polynomial x minus k is a factor of the polynomial p of x if and only if p of k equals 0. And we get a lot of information using these two together. Notice that if x minus k divides p of x, the remainder is p of k. The remainder is p of k. Well, here's the remainder. And what this indicates is that the remainder is 0 if x minus k is a factor. Well, let's put those two things together and work an example. Here's what we want to do. We want to determine whether the second polynomial is a factor of the first. What we have are p of x equals 4x cubed plus 24x squared plus 48x plus 32. As a second polynomial, we have x plus 2. Well, according to the theorems that we just saw, we can take k. Now, this has to be considered x minus k, so k is negative 2, and divide it, and I'm going to use synthetic division, into the polynomial. I have coefficients 4, 24, 48, and 32. My result will indicate that x plus 2 is a factor if the remainder is 0. So let's do this division and see if that's what occurs. I have first coefficient 4, 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, negative 8 plus 24 is 16. 16 times negative 2 is negative 32, negative 32 plus 48 is 16. 16 times negative 32 is negative 32, and that sum is 0. The remainder is 0, which indicates x plus 2 is a factor of p of x. And I can write p of x in factored form as x plus 2 times these coefficients used in front of powers of x, 1 less than x cubed. So 4x squared plus 16x plus 16. Notice that I don't need to write plus 0 or plus the remainder at all because the remainder is 0. Well, why don't you try a problem? I'd like you to pause the video and work the following problem, then restart it when you're ready to check your work. I want you to use synthetic division to determine whether the number 4 is a 0 of the polynomial p of x equals 2x cubed minus 6x squared minus 9x plus 6. Pause the video now. Well, let's see how you did. Here's our polynomial. And what we want to do is determine if 4 is a 0. So we're going to synthetically divide 4 in and see if we get remainder 0. The coefficients are 2, negative 6, negative 9, and 6. Bring down the 2, multiply by 4 to get 8, add to negative 6 to get 2, multiply to get 8, add to get negative 1, multiply to get negative 4, add to get 2. What this indicates, since we got a remainder of 2, is that 4 is not a 0 of p of x. Well, let's try one more example. Here's what we want to do. 
We want to factor the polynomial p of x equal 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 17x plus 30 into linear factors given that k equal 2 is a 0. So what we need to do is take 2, synthetically divide it in. We will get remainder 0. We're told that it's a 0. And what it will help us do is factor. Let's see. 2 synthetically divided in 2, 2, negative 3, negative 17, 30. Start by bringing down the first coefficient, 2. Multiply to get 4. Add to get 1. Multiply to get 2. Add to get negative 15. Multiply to get negative 30. Add to get 0. And that's what we expected. We were told that 2 is a 0. But by doing this division, we were able to factor p of x partially into x minus 2 using the 0, 2, and writing the factor x minus that, times these coefficients put in front of powers of x, starting with 1 less than x cubed. So 2x squared plus x minus 15. And we've partially factored p of x. To get the rest of the factors, we're going to factor this quadratic. So we'll rewrite the factor x minus 2 and factor the quadratic. 15 is 5 times 3. And I need plus 1 as my middle coefficient. And there's my product of linear factors, or my linear factors whose product is the polynomial p. Well, in this lesson, we've looked at just a little bit of the theory of polynomial functions. Be sure to work lots of exercises from your textbook for practice.